about is uh, physical pain and the source. Oh, oh. Yeah? Yeah, physical pain. <coughs> so, um, it seems like maybe if people are watching these videos, even if this is the first one, that uh, they might get the sense that what we're talking about is mind as distinct from the body mm -hmm. rather than body-mind. Mm -hmm. So I thought it might be apropos to sort of answer the question that a couple of people have asked. It's like, can, you know, getting to know thoughts help with physical pain? And if so, how? Mm. It, it can really, it's important to make a distinction between pain and suffering. And pain is, you know, you don't, with any of this work, hopefully lose any of your nerve endings. I mean, that's, that isn't the plan. Uh, you want to have those to protect the body. You don't want to burn your finger continuously in the fire. So we keep that pain part. What we don't, what we can ameliorate and go after is the suffering part, which is the story I make in my mind about pain. And I begin, we've all been there. You have all kinds of projections, memories from the past, projections of how horrible it's going to be in the future. Is this pain ever going to end? Why me? All those stories come in. You can not have those. If you have those, then you're just left with pure pain. That may be very difficult, but it's nothing compared to the what you can create as far as suffering in your mind if you just start let it go wild. And you know that distinction I think between pain and suffering is very useful because you know obviously there are many different kinds of pain. There's people who have to deal with horrible chronic pain on an everyday basis. There's brief outbursts of pain that we can experience in our everyday life and uh, what I've observed is that even in those brief outbursts of pain that being able to turn the consciousness back towards its source allows for a kind of at once detachment from the pain mm -hmm. and a kind of sharing of the pain with the whole cosmos right it's mm -hmm. like you're not carrying it all yourself but what becomes interesting and that I've observed in my own life is that that it's in itself can be actually very healing. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I think you're absolutely right about this distinction between pain and suffering. No, you're not going to be able to prevent the physical uh, uh, events of pain. That we're, we're all going to face those at different mm -hmm. moments. But as we wither the narrative mind, there's less of a person there to narrate the pain into suffering, as you put it. But then what's interesting is that that's, that's a kind of snapshot of like, okay, I'm riding my bicycle up a very steep hill, I'm able to be in source, so the pain is there, but the suffering, not so much. But then what's very interesting is that means that I can keep riding up that hill. And in keep riding up that hill and other hills, then I can get stronger. So in fact, it doesn't even hurt me riding up that hill now. You say, okay, well, that's a kind of positive version of, mm -hmm. of it. But there's also uh, what I experienced from long-term inflammation uh, that I had of the allergic kind, both in my lungs and uh, on my skin, that when you start to get into the situation where you can make the distinction between pain and suffering, that the pain itself starts to wither. Because when it comes to things like inflammation, if you can get some distance on it, A, you can tend it better. Mm -hmm. You stop thrashing around quite so much because, you know, pain makes us all terrible caretakers of ourselves. Because, But then that leads to the decrease of the inflammation a little bit and the next time and the next time to the point that now I experience uh, suffering sometimes because I'm so good most, of, I, I feel so well most of the time, and then something happens and I go, oh, you know, what's that? <laughs> you know, I, I have a little bit of a moment that I have to get uh, some distance on. So I think that, that making that distinction between pain and suffering is fundamental, and there can be a feedback loop towards having, experiencing real healing by making that distinction right. between pain and suffering. There were some, there were some studies on uh, <clears throat> what's, the, what's the best way to ameliorate your pain. Uh, do this to it or move into it. 
and consistently they keep showing that you know do not try to wall off your pain and uh, you know insulate yourself from it. You're better off to open up to it, face into it, and be one with it. I wrote a blog post on on the placebo effect, which is really turns out to be a very high bar. Mm -hmm. We're finding this non pharmaceutical companies have a very difficult time beating the placebo effect. Yeah. So there is that, you know, you can do it all yourself, and the mind is not passive in this placebo effect. The mind has the ability to fix itself if you just let get out of the way, stop turning into suffering, let the mind operate, work with let the brain operate and work with the pain, then it can be really very effective. Uh, they've also found that there is something they call placebo analgesia, where you actually do, maybe to your point, where you're in this not suffering mode, but this placebo, this you're just attending to the pain, has an analgesic effect. It actually can go in, like, you know, like aspirin, but go in and actually cut down the pain, certainly your perception of pain. So from that perspective, there's so much we can do if we just get out of the suffering and be present for what the pain is, where it is, and uh, what's going on there. And that feeds into the experiment with accepting that the world is perfect. Because nothing can seem to be a clearer signal that the world is not perfect than when we're experiencing pain. Mm -hmm. But as you point out, if we then go, oh, the world is wrong, I, you know, this needs to go away, we need to make that separation, that dualism, mm -hmm. then it exacerbates it. Right. Rather than if we can be with the pain, as difficult as it is, even for a moment, if we can be with it, then that pain... Well, first of all, it remains pain rather than right, suffering. suffering, but it does feel experientially right. like that analgesic effect is real. Right. So we're not just talking about uh, the mind, we're talking about the body-mind, mm -hmm. because the mind and the body can't be separated from right. each other. Right. Right.